Hey everyone, so this is going to be the Meet the Teacher uh, video uh, in case you're not able to come to Meet the Teacher night or in case it doesn't end up being held. At least you'll kind of have a rough idea of, of expectations. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to go over should have been covered in the uh, syllabus that I had the students uh, bring home to you. But in case you, you miss some of the stuff, I'll just quickly go through it uh, right now. So first off, um, there are a few ways to contact me. So the best way is through email. Uh, this is mainly because of the fact that uh, I can answer at any time in the day and you can respond at any time in the day. It just kind of makes life easy. Plus I also get um, the everything kind of written down. Um, you can also contact me through Canvas. Uh, this kind of works the same way through email. Either uh, you can hop on to your child's account or if you uh, made a parent observer account uh, you can also you know message me through there it kind of works the same way uh, you can see the school's main page if you don't know how to make a, a an observer account uh, there are going to be some things I put on the canvas uh, I actually put all my um, notes and all the worksheets on there and if anyone's absent they, I'll put assignments on there I think uh, for the AP class their homework assignments are going to be on there so you know, I do use it a little bit, but not nearly as much as uh, previous years. And then uh, you could also call me. However, this I feel is kind of uh, ends up being a little bit difficult at times since uh, I have a very limited amount of time during the school day to call. It may turn out that the time that works best for you may not work best for me and vice versa. Uh, so we might actually just constantly be missing each other. That's why I kind of prefer the emails. But again, uh, if you are free during the school day, uh, feel free to call and I'll, I'll uh, call you back uh, if you leave a message. All right. um, so AP Physics 1 is the first of the two year course. There is an AP Physics 2. I did mention to the students that if at the end of the year they feel like they want to continue with this and take AP Physics 2, um, while the school right now does not have an AP Physics 2 program, if enough students uh, apply and basically ask the science chair to run a program, I think they might need about 20 signatures, uh, then we can actually run it. I do recommend, I would definitely uh, like it because the AP Physics 2 compared to the 1 is actually a lot easier, um, a little bit more interesting. It's got some nice topics in there. Uh, if they have some friends in the Regents class who did really well in Regents, but for some reason don't want to take AP Physics 1, AP Physics 2 would be a nice um, switch over for them. Since, like I said, it's not nearly, I don't think it's nearly as difficult as the AP 1. Um, I mentioned this to the students that this class is extremely tough. Um, this is actually one of the toughest uh, AP exams because they have a bunch of questions that are qualitative and quantitative. So it can be really tricky. In fact, a lot of the questions are actually designed to be tricky. So throughout the course, my entire goal is to try to train them for these tricks and try to teach them how to kind of approach the questions in the way that they want so that they don't get tripped up by this. Um, so we're gonna be focusing on you know, how to answer both of those. Uh, at the end of the year, through this course, they're going to take two different tests. They're going to take the AP Physics 1, uh, which is going to be on May 12th. And then they're going to take the Regents test, which is going to be uh, about June 22nd-ish. Uh, they are expected to take the Regents at the end, um, since uh, not many students have actually taken both uh, the Regents and the AP 1 yet. So these are actually the topics uh, that are going to be covered in AP 1. Uh, you'll notice that two of them are in blue. Uh, the main reason is because the first five topics are actually covered in the Regents course as well. Uh, the blue ones are not covered in the Regents. So uh, when we do the switch over, these five topics will just kind of carry over and then we'll end up learning a few more topics. Uh, the extra topics that we'll have to cover between when they, take the, when they come back from the AP exam uh, and then to the regents would be these uh, last five topics. However, based off of their abilities in this class, those five topics will be very easy. Won't even need to spend much time covering them. So the materials that they need to bring, 
uh, I highly recommend that they bring a pencil uh, with an eraser. They're going to be making mistakes, and that's perfectly fine. In fact, I kind of expect it and, and want it because the act of making mistakes and fixing it actually does help kind of solidify the information uh, really well. For the calculator, they should all have calculators on hand. They should be getting calculators from their math department. Uh, but in case, for some reason, if they're not getting those calculators, uh, they just need some sort of uh, scientific calculator on hand. I do have some in the classroom, but they should bring it so that they have it for the exam as well. Uh, they also should be bringing a three ring binder. They're going to be getting a lot of um, handouts, uh, note packets and things like that. And it's going to make life easy for them if they're not constantly fumbling through their backpack in different folders trying to find stuff. It's only been about two weeks with not that many uh, handouts. And I've already started to notice kids kind of m misplacing them because they have five folders and the folders kind of get mixed up. So I think a three ring binder would be the best thing for them. Um, for the grading policy, uh, this is th the way that the science department's gonna be grading. There's two main categories, basically assessments and class participation. Both of them are 50%. Uh, the assessments are gonna be three categories. There's going to be tests, quizzes, and a quarterly. The quarterly is just another test. Uh, for the most part, each unit, they're going to have two tests. Uh, well, sorry, they're going to have a test for each unit. Uh, and each quarter is going to have about two tests and a quarterly. Uh, this is going to allow me so I can drop the lowest test grade. Uh, and then they'll get a, it, these tests are actually going to be modeled to kind of resemble the AP. So they'll have an idea of what to expect when the AP uh, arrives. Uh, they're going to have quizzes every now and then um, throughout. Uh, part of the quizzes might also be related to the test correction. So they'll, they'll have quizzes uh, here and there. Uh, I might do some homework quizzes where they kind of work in groups. But for the most part, that's what's going to be in the assessment category. Uh, the other part, the class participation, is going to be a little bit looser grading. Um, one of the categories is classwork and, cla and the class participation. This is all just, uh, this should be a, a pretty easy hundred for them. Um, during the week, I basically write down uh, whether or not they're doing what they're supposed to, doing their do nows, making sure that they're working on any classworks for it, uh, that they're participating. If I call on them, they don't respond with just, I don't know, that they show that they kind of understand what's going on. Um, that they're not looking on their phone too much or doing work from outside of the class. And at the end of the week, uh, I'll give them a grade. Um, for the most part, like I said, it should be an easy hundred, but every now and then you might get a kid who you know gets low on it. Um, typically that just means that they're doing something that they're not supposed to. Um, if you have a question on that, wondering why you know your child has a, a 60 in the class participation, let me know. And I'll, I'll give you a, a heads up on, on why that is. Uh, homework. So there's going to be a worksheet uh, or a problem set that they're going to be assigned on Fridays. And then it will be due the following Wednesday. So they're going to have essentially five days to complete it. Uh, the homeworks are going to be uploaded through Canvas. Uh, and then they'll have to write all their answers on a separate sheet of paper. Uh, they don't have to actually print anything out. I will have everything, any papers that they need to write on. Um, these home these homework problems they're a little bit of regions practice and a little bit of you know free response AP style to kind of get them an idea of what the questions might look like. Um, these are going to be graded based off of uh, complete work, so making sure that they have units and stuff. Because again, I want to try to get them practice on answering AP questions uh, before they take the tests. Uh, and then the other part is the labs. So the labs uh, are going to be done pretty regularly. Uh, some of the labs may take multiple days. Uh, all the labs are required both for the AP and for the region. So they can't really miss one. If they're absent for a lab, they have to make it up either during a free period or after school. Um, there's a lot of stuff about the labs, uh, but most of the labs should be able to be done in class with very little needing to be done outside of class. Um, so the AP exam, uh, there's a lot of information about the AP exam. I, I ran through it with them. I'll probably do some more uh, as we get a little bit closer. Um, 
So one thing that's a little different about this year compared to previous years is uh, I'm recommending students to take what's called the APC exam. I've done this at my previous school when I taught AP uh, Physics 1. Uh, because there's a lot of carryover between the AP Physics 1 and the APC, what I tell students is that they can study for this independently in conjunction for the APC exam. Uh, and this will kind of give them uh, a chance of getting double the credit uh, and as well as other things. Though I always tell students that they should look at their colleges before they make the decision because it might turn out that the college that they want to go to uh, doesn't accept the APC, though uh, chances of that are actually uh, aren't that high. Most colleges do accept the C over the one. So this is a combination of physics and calculus, though um, the calculus isn't really that bad. Uh, like I said, typically the studying is going to be done uh, on their own. They can come uh, to extra help. I'll give them resources, but I won't be uh, using any class time for it. Um, it's going to be pretty, like I said, pretty much all independent. Uh, there's a bunch of positives to this. Uh, typically, the, uh, my, the when I gave this to my other schools, the average student usually got one point higher on the APC versus the AP1. So if a student got a three on the AP1, they're very likely to get a four on the APC, with one kid actually getting a five on the C and getting a one, uh, getting a three on the AP1. Um, and this is actually what most colleges teach to. Um, most college classes give questions that are very similar to APC. So like I said, I highly recommend it. Um, there's so much material about it. So it's not uh, going to be too hard. Like I said, there's very little that they'll have to learn that's new. And that stuff I could help over um, extra help. Uh, for the most part, though, this kind of has to be done um, or you'll have to communicate with a guidance counselor. I don't think you have to make a decision until around Christmas break, uh, but you'll have to let them know and see how to go about doing that. Um, I think you just kind of sign up for it. You don't need to take an APC class to take the test. Um, one thing I always tell the students, and I think it's important that the parents also know this, is that, you know, as a reminder, the AP class is tough. It's kind of designed that way. The test is the toughest, so it makes sense that the, the class is the toughest. Um, it's re it's very, very important that students uh, stay patient. Usually it takes a while for the, uh, for the understanding to kick in. So a lot of times they'll be struggling in the first quarter, but they keep at it and by the second or third quarter, they'll start to get really strong. Um, so I always say keep at it and try to stay positive because I've seen many times a person who even if they started off strong, having a negative mindset resulted in them being um, dropping in their ability and you know seeing a kind of decline in that. Um, I also recommend that students just constantly stay um, involved, you know, asking questions, doing the problems uh, before I go over it, calling me over to ask questions, things like that. Uh, handing me assignments beforehand and having me do like a quick look to see if they hit everything. A lot of this stuff can be done um, to kind of help improve their grade. So uh, the more active they are, the more involved they are, uh, the better it will be for them. Um, I also tell people, uh, because a lot of them are, I know that are taking uh, other APs and they're you know, involved in extracurriculars and clubs and, and jobs, I always tell them to let me know if there's something going to happen. Like, for example, they know that their homework grade is going to be due or their homework assignments are due on Wednesdays. If they find out that or if they realize that something's going to happen during Monday to Wednesday uh, outside of school, maybe, you know, uh, something came up at home, maybe uh, something come up at work or, or anything like that. Uh, I always tell them, you know, let me know before the due date and I'll try to work with them. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. Contact me, email me, uh, whatever, and I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail about any of these questions. Otherwise, uh, good luck and have a great day.